Verehrter Herr Präsident, Council President, Commission President, Honorable Members, when in 2018 the uh, budget negotiations began with a proposal from the Commission, the world, Europe, was a totally different place. At that time, we were right now we find ourselves in a health crisis with hundreds of thousands of dead, millions of infected individuals, sick, and we still don't know where all of this will lead. Nobody knows. Nobody knows where all of this will go. But one thing, there is something that citizens know, and that is that the United Europe, that a united Europe uh, has, many less, has learned many lessons from the crises of the past, that solidarity is the way out of crises. We don't leave anybody out. And that was the message of the European presidency, and I'd like to take this opportunity on, the, on this particular occasion. On behalf of the um, Bundeskanzler as well, I'd like to thank all of you. I know that institutional issues, of course, within the European Union are extremely important, and there's always that competition between council and parliament, but we need trust honorable members, and I have of the impression that there was that trust, there is that trust right now between the Parliament and the Council, because we all bear the responsibility. We know, all know that, of course, sometimes discussion, conflict is there, it exists, discussions on the MFF, we had to build bridges, we had to achieve compromises, but there was a forum to all of that, and you all know that there is a great discussion right now, which of course divides Europe, and that is the issue of rule of law. And I'll say this very clear, without your clarity on this issue and your position, uh, uh, an issue that we simply put aside, it's something that we have to resolve in a constructive fashion. We have to have a joint understanding of what this means, rule of law, because this keeps us together. It's not just an internal market. It's not just an economic community. It is a community of people who adhere to rule of law. And it is absolutely necessary for that to exist, to, for us to move forward into the future. And uh, hammering out various compromises, and of course, um, Michel Char has made references to the difficulties there, but 27 member states finally came to an agreement. And this is not to be taken for granted. It is absolutely imperative. And I defend this compromise because it... It, there was not a single word changed as far as what we've negotiated with you and discussed with you, and it opened the opportunity for satisfaction for all. The, Europe, the ECJ will send a message out whether what we negotiated is something which is in, according, in accordance to the treaties, and those who permanently speak about uh, violating the treaties and uh, say that uh, certain institutions are m stepping over or simply uh, violating the treaties, the issues of national sovereignty, the issues of national identity. Now the opportunity exists through a ruling of the ECJ that will find some sort of construct within which we can all live and that we will all have a joint understanding of what we are and that we are of common principles. And this is extremely important uh, to deal with any future instruments. It's important for that cooperation be with the Commission, a, a rule of law discussion is absolutely necessary, as has been touched upon by on numerous occasions by the Commission. So we have now that particular issue that binds us. We will work together in a spirit of solidarity to emerge from this crisis as we have from crises in the past to deal with the issues that exist. The individuals that have fallen ill, the regions that are suffering, they need that concerted effort on our part. We have to stick to our word. From next year, the first day of next year, the money will flow. 
where we have said it will flow. It's absolutely necessary for us to be able to deal with this pandemic as effectively as possible to provide uh, that, if you like, overall palliative effect that has to be provided. It, it's the moment to build a new future because we find ourselves in the, with issues such as protection of the climate, protection of the earth from climate change, uh, digitalization. Uh, these issues are all taken up within the MFF and in the various negotiations team have worked intensively on this. And I'd like to thank all of those teams for working so effectively, so tenaciously as well. They have set the tone. In the MFF, there's something which is something that no, perhaps, other national budget has. And I can say that as representing the council, that 30% of the budget within the MFF will go for climate protection. That gender equality has become, if you like, a major issue, and that men and women ought to be on an equal footing, that we have own resources, finally, a system, uh, an issue that there's been numerous, there's been numerous years of discussion on this particular issue, but finally we now have established that absolutely necessary basis for the future as concerns own resources. And in these ever so difficult times, where throughout the world, democracy, uh, authority, where democracy is more important than ever, where it is absolutely necessary to emphasize the importance of liberal democracy, uh, we can protect individuals from authoritarianism, from terrorism, from health risks, from the unjust uh, issues out there in this world. And in Europe, uh, now we have proper legislation as concerns climate protection, and this can work because the three institutions have worked together concertedly, have committed themselves. We now have the courage. We now have the courage to move forward effectively into the future. And I'd like to thank you. I'd like to thank you for your trust. And, of course, I'd like to thank the presidency to come, the Portuguese presidency. And I wish you all of the best, all the best, for a more sovereign, a stronger, and a more robust Europe. Thank you very much, ladies.